Welcome once again to the Faith Fellowship Baptist Church Daily Devotional Series. Today we're in the first part of Psalm 31. Uh, it's a longer psalm, so we'll just be walking through it in a couple different parts. And uh, today we're going to cover the first 13 verses of the psalm. So if you have your Bible, feel free, uh, please turn there uh, to Psalm 31, and we're going to read it together. Psalm 31 to the choir master, a psalm of David. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love, because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul, and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. So in this first part of the psalm, uh, it's largely David crying out to the Lord because of uh, great distress that's going on in his life. Uh, and, and what we can notice from this first part uh, is that though David is under great pressure, in great anxiety, under, uh, it says in verse 7, he says that uh, God knows the distress of his soul. His soul is greatly distressed at this point. Um, though he is walking in all of those things, uh, in verse 8, he says that God has set his feet in a broad place. Uh, David always comes to this place of confidence in God, uh, that God will put his feet on solid ground, that, that God isn't going to pull the rug out from under him, uh, that God is his constant, God is there, God gives him joy and peace in the midst of everything that's going on. And you and I can still have that as well. Uh, he starts, in you, O Lord, do I take refuge? Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. This can be our basic cry as well in the midst of whatever stresses, stresses or anxieties uh, or distress in our soul is happening, uh, even in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic. Um, but David does not make this transition uh, passively. Right? I think this is maybe our, our big takeaway from today, is how does David come from the place of great distress to the place of rest in God? And he doesn't do it uh, just sitting around doing nothing. Sometimes when we get into a place of distress, we, we tend to just sit there and languish and say, Oh God, woe is me! And we don't do anything about our situation. David starts by crying to God in prayer. This should be our, our first reflex any time some, something happens in our life that causes us stress or anxiety. How often do we just start to worry about things? How often do we just start to try and take care of it on our own uh, without ever turning to God in prayer? David recognizes, I, uh, there's a trouble in my life now, so instantly I'm going to turn to God. Verse 2, he says, incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily, be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. This is his first response, his gut response, when something comes into his life. Is that the same for you or for me? When we face a trouble, is our first response to turn to God in prayer? I, I think it should be. Uh, later on in verse 6, uh, David also repents of every idol in his life. He says, I, I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. He says, I need to get rid of everything else that I'm, I'm maybe worshipping in my life. In fact, I, I hate those who try to distract me in that way. How often do we, when trouble or anxiety or stress enter our life, turn to a worthless idol? For me, I, I often try to drown out my troubles in entertainment, right? I just turn to a movie or a TV or a book or something to try and just not think about it, right? 
if there's something troubling or stressful in my life, I just think, I'll go to this and that'll help because then I don't have to think about it. I can just drown it out with something else and then I'll be okay. Uh, for others, uh, there, there are many ways, many idols that we go to when we're troubled or stress, stressed that are not uh, good. They're, they're actually worthless in the end. They don't help the problem. Uh, and, and maybe it's pouring more into work. Maybe it's uh, just distracting yourself, again, like me with entertainment or with food. Or there are many other things that we turn to uh, when we are stressed or feel troubled. Some look for uh, just a f affirmation from others and, and we, we go and we vent to other people when we're stressed or in trouble. And, and then they'll say, oh no, you're doing a great job. It's all fine. And then we feel affirmed again. It's, it's a, an idol if it's not turning to the Lord. And David says, in my trouble, I get rid of all those worthless idols and I focus on God. I go to him and I go to him alone. This is my strategy for going from great distress to feeling joy and confidence and standing with my feet on solid ground in the Lord. Uh, he stays with God in prayer until he has that. David uh, continues in prayer and then verses uh, 7 and 8 again, he says, But I will rejoice and I will be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction, you have known the distress of my soul, and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet on a broad place. Uh, he stays with God, as, as Tim Keller put it, until God's love and favor produce joy. He stays with God until God's love and favor produce joy, compensating for all other losses. Because when we have joy in the Lord, the troubles, the stresses, the losses of this life uh, begin to not mean very much. When we truly uh, stay with God and we remember the joy that he gives us, when we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, those things produce joy that are greater than it, the loss of any earthly thing. These are the ways that we, as well as David, can commit ourselves into his hands, which is verse 5. Into your hands I commit my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. These are the strategies. We, we have to be active in this, though, right? We can't just sit back and, and wait for God to bring us out of our distress. No, when we face it, David says, I turn to God in prayer. So I forsake all other idols, and I stay with God in prayer until I feel his peace. All of this we can do uh, in spite of our sin because Jesus committed his hands into God's spirit uh, on the cross. It says so in, in Luke 23, 46, he quotes this psalm, right? Into your hands I commit my spirit. Uh, his sacrifice on the cross means that our sins are forgiven and we have God's righteousness. We can now commit our hands into God's spirit and not fear his wrath on our sin. And so we can do this uh, when we face trouble. We can pray, we can forsake our idols, uh, we can stay with God until we feel his joy all because of what Jesus did for you and for me. Uh, come back for the next video tomorrow and uh, we'll talk about the second half of this psalm. Thanks for joining us today.